What's up guys? Welcome to episode 7. I'm Evil C and today we'll be looking at Call of Duty World at War for the Nintendo DS. Now this is the second Call of Duty game that's been released for the DS, the first being Call of Duty 4 which was released last year. And just like that version, it was again developed by Endspace, who some of you may remember as the developer behind the GameCube first person adventure game Geist, released in 2005. Now, World at War once again returns to World War II, and as you probably already guessed, you have to basically um, fight all the Nazis again. Um, now, this game has quite a lot of content, and I want to show you as much of it as possible. I'll show you some of the single player, I'll go over uh, uh, some of the extra features and modes, I'll show you a quick um, online match and I'll go through all those features and modes that that offers. So, put on your steel helmets, grab your M1 Garand, and let's prepare to give Hitler another kick in the ass. So here's the main menu of the game. You got single player, multiplayer, Nintendo Wi-Fi connection, and War Room. Now I'll take you through all four of these options, and let's start with War Room. Now you've got options, statistics, collectibles, credits, and save data. Under options, you can uh, change the uh, setting to left-handed, so for all you southpaws out there, the game's got you covered. You can invert your y-axis, so instead of up being up and down being down, you can swap it, so up is down and down is up. Um, you've got sight mode here, um, double tap and ribbon, ribbon, double tap. Uh, uh, now. When we get into the actual gameplay, I'll explain what this means. You can adjust the aiming sensitivity of your stylus, and you also have this option down here, ADS, which stands for Aim Down Sights, uh, Double Tap Sensitivity, uh, which, uh, again, I will cover when we get into the actual gameplay. Now you have statistics, and basically what the statistics is it, it covers three things. First one, it covers all of your single player um, statistics. All the kills you've gotten in single player, how many times you've died, how, how many shots have hit, how many you've fired, your accuracy, your headshots, melee kills, grenade kills, how many collectibles you've found, you know, and, and etc. Now, the second option is all of your multiplayer statistics, and this goes for both uh, local multiplayer and online. How many kills you've gotten, how many times you've died, how many individual rounds you've won and lost, how many points you've gotten in capture the flag and hunter prey modes, and how many flags you've picked up. And the third option are your awards. Awards are basically like achievements, and you earn these things when you're playing through the single player mode. Now, for example, uh, uh, um, the One Man Army Award, you get this by achieving 1,500 kills in the single player. You've got Headhunter, which you get by getting 100 headshots in the campaign. So, um, uh, now you've got um, uh, collectibles. Now, basi basically, the the way you get collectibles is um, 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 <laughs> hidden throughout the levels are these little gold stars that you come across, and uh, and when you pick them up, they help fill out this picture here. Now there's 32 in total. I've gotten 29 of them, and when you complete this entire picture, you can unlock a secret. Now, what's that secret? Well, I can't tell you, because it wouldn't be a secret anymore, right? And then uh, you've got credits, which are self-explanatory, and delete save data, which is self-explanatory, and, and I'm not going to do that. Now, as for the multiplayer, I'll show you what the multiplayer options are here. Now, uh, the reason I'm going to show you here is because the way the online works is sometimes you're the host and sometimes someone else is the host. The game randomly chooses who the host is. Now I could play 30 matches and never be the host. Uh, and if I'm not the host, I can't um, 
highlight what all the multiplayer features are. So it's just better if I show you here. Now, uh, <laughs> just keep in mind that when you log into Wi-Fi, you'll see the exact same menus. So you've got free for all and team games. You've got three modes in this game, Deathmatch, Hunter, Prey, and Capture the Flag. But these modes all have a team version. So basically this game has like six modes. As you'll see right here, team, team games. Same thing. So we'll just go to Deathmatch for this just to show you. Now there's... Uh, there... Uh, there are 11 maps in this state uh, in this game which is quite uh, which is quite a lot you've got field hill 26 island palace subway trenches jungle rhine forest silo shori approach and factory so we'll just choose the field and and I'll show you what the options are whoops sorry guys I, I pressed the button by accident okay so these are the options that you can can adjust. You can the adjust the time limit in increment. They go by increments of one for a maximum of twenty. You can adjust your score limit again. They go in increments of one for a maximum of twenty, and you can adjust the spawn time. They go in increments of five for a maximum of thirty. Now here uh, you can choose to be the Axis or the Allies. And on the top screen, again like in Wi-Fi, it shows all the people who are playing, what faction they are, and what uh, weapon they're using. And then you just you know, choose, your sh choose your soldier and your gun, and the game would begin like normal. So that's basically how multiplayer works. Now as far as single player, you've got campaign. Uh, and the campaign in this game is is very long. This will uh, this will run you at least like six hours and maybe even longer. Uh, and you can choose from three different um, um, difficulty settings. Uh, now, a quick quick play is basically all the stages that you unlock in the campaign. You can come into quick play and play them in any order that you want. And chal challenge mode is an entirely separate mode. Basically what this does is it puts you into a random situation from one of the stages but it gives you an objective to complete. Like as you can see here you have uh, on challenge number one you have to try to get 20 kills in three minutes. Now for challenge two you have to you have to try to get two melee kills and three grenade kills in three minutes. And then uh, and as they go on, they get harder. Like this one here is 20 kills, 50% accuracy, and two melee kills within three minutes. And as you complete each challenge, it unlocks the next one. And there is a maximum of 30 challenges. So again, this is an entirely separate mode. You don't have to do it, but uh, it's a uh, it's a very welcomed addition, and I actually like it because it is challenging. So. Uh, you know, for people for people who like to challenge themselves, uh, they will appreciate uh, this extra challenge mode. And I love when they include challenge modes in this uh, in first-person shooters. Like uh, if you remember Perfect Dark or um, the um, Time Splitters games, always have a challenge mode like this. So it's really cool. Now for this, I will show you one of the early American levels to demonstrate the gameplay. Alright men, the enemy occupies a village to the north. Once we secure that village, we can radio for resupply and then move on to destroy the cliff guns. The enemy doesn't know we're here yet, but they will soon enough. Let's mount out! Okay, so to control the game, you press forward on the D-pad to walk forward and backwards to walk backwards. And if you're left-handed, you can use the face buttons on the right side. Now to fire your equipped weapon, you press L. Or again, if you're left-handed, left you press R. Now on the bottom screen, you have your radar, which shows your objectives, which is represented by the star, and those little red dots are where your enemies are. Now, this is your currently equipped weapon. If you want to change, press on it and slide over, and you see I have a pistol. 
and you'll change to the pistol. And to reload your gun, tap once on the weapon icon and you'll reload your gun just like that. Now you also have grenades down here which you use the same way as a gun. You can, you can cook your grenade by holding L and then toss it and it works just like that. Now you can duck by pressing duck down twice on the D-pad and to get up, press up twice and then if you want to sprint forward press up twice and you'll run. run. Now, as I mentioned earlier about the um, the double t the, the double tap for the uh, aim down sights mode and and the ribbon, I'll show you that now. You have a choice. You can either choose to double tap twice on the touch screen and you'll bring up your sights, and to go out you press it again.